<laughs> All right, it's time for a tutorial. Uh, so I know there's not a lot of um, tutorials for Virto because it's new software and it's got its own little nuances. And, uh, people are still trying to learn how to use it, so I figured I'd make another one. Um, today, I'm going to attempt to make a low-poly house scene in VR. Um, what I've done is I've created a scene um, on my Mac or uh, desktop that has uh, this cloud cube map skybox already loaded. I published that to my cloud and then pulled it down into VR so I can just at least have kind of like the right kind of environment ready for me for me uh, before I actually start creating this thing. Um, so because I'm not really what I would call a good 3D artist, I cannot re uh, work without a reference. So usually one of the first things I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of work with a picture as far as, um, you know, something I can use to go by. So that's what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically load up a texture that I've already saved um, onto my uh, computer here as far as what I want this particular thing to end up looking similar to. It's not going to be exact, but uh, so basically what I did was I just imported the texture and then went to the material settings and bumped the emission all the way up so the light doesn't make the, uh, it doesn't affect the uh, the texture appearance so that basically it's not dark so I can see the damn thing. And I'm just going to kind of use this as my guide for what I'm trying to do today. And I'm always going to kind of have this at arm's length. Um, so the first thing I'm probably going to try to do is create the island that everything's going to sit on. Um, that shouldn't be too bad, but those are always famous last words. So it kind of looks to have kind of like this pen pentagon pentagram shape. And then from there, it kind of extrudes out. So whenever I think of something extruding in an initial shape, uh, the first place I kind of go to in my mind is the sketch tool. And because this doesn't have a lot of points, I'm just picking polygon. And I'm just going to kind of draw a basic outline of what I think this island is going to look like. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect, but because I'm a, a visual person, I like to work with a picture. Um, so you can see this is basically locked to this plane, so it'll at least be flat. I've got extrude turned on here so that when I do this, it should extrude out a shape, um, which is basically what I want, a shape. So that's good. That's real good. And this is more or less going to be green. It doesn't have to be the exact green from the picture, but green enough. I have a light here. It's going to kind of be my, my simulated sun. Um, and I'm going to put it over there. So, cool. Okay. So I'm going to work with this kind of in front of me so that I'm not uncomfortably looking down all the time. So I'm going to kind of pretend like I'm up in the sky and that everything I'm looking at here is more or less, uh, you know, top-down perspective. I'm going to do this in edit mode, actually. So I'm going to select everything here. I'm going to go into rotate. Actually, why don't I just grab it? There we go. That's much easier. And I want to kind of align this with the grid here so that at least it's more or less as flat as it possibly can be. Um, so I kind of have this the way I want now. When I pop out of edit mode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure... Well, I'm going to keep working in edit mode. I'm going to select everything, and then I'm going to scale it. Now, this particular situation can happen a lot where you're trying to grab these little things and it's kind of annoying. The way I have this set up right now is that you can hit, uh, you press in on the option or option on the touchpad on the uh, left controller and you can lock your axes so that in this particular case, Z is the only one that's moving. So that makes it a little easier. If you're actually moving something, there's another option where you can point at this little menu button right here and lock. I don't think I have that set up for scaling though, which is why I'm doing it kind of the old fashioned way here. So, I just want to kind of get this to go down. There we go. That's starting to piss me off there. Okay. I'm going to reset these. Go out of edit mode. Oops. Always go back to auto if you want to move something. And again, I'm just swiping with my left thumb to change these. So, I basically have that the way I want it. And... What I'm going to proceed to do here is take care of the brown part that's going to essentially extend out of this. Uh, and the brown part is going to be kind of the dirt underneath the green. Uh, there's a number of ways I can do this. I think the simplest way 
um, probably would be to extrude it out and then do CSG to subtract parts uh, parts out of it or away from it. I wouldn't mind having a second light here too to work with because it's kind of annoying that I keep having things being dark on certain sides. So I'm going to duplicate the light and move it over here. This isn't going to be the final lighting for the scene, but just enough for me to work with so that I can see this thing from both sides. So what I'm gonna do in this particular case to make things a little easier on me is just take all these polygons right here on the opposite side or the bottom side of the ground and go into the select paint mode and select all these so that I have them. Now I grab a couple ones I didn't mean to by accident, that's easy. I just go to remove and zap them so that they're not part of the selection. So now that I have everything that I want selected here, all I really need to do is separate this out into a separate object so that it essentially can have its own shading properties and be kind of independent from the, the green top here. So by doing that, or in order to do that, all I have to do is select everything I want, hit face, and then separate. And what I've done here is I've got two separate objects now, this piece and this bottom piece here. And now I can take the bottom piece and essentially recolor it. Now, if I try to change the colors of this, it will actually borrow, oh no, it didn't, it forked the material. Well, that's good. In the past, I've had to assign a different material group, but it looks like in this case, I'm good with separate. So that's good. What I'm gonna do is find kind of a nice brown earth tone for this. Doesn't have to be perfect. That'll be good. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop back into edit mode on this brown piece. I'm gonna select everything here. Again, remember this is a separate independent model than the original part it started from. And now that I have everything selected, I'm going to extrude and then move. But as I'm moving, hold the option button right here, or not the option button, the menu button, which locks to a specific axis. So I can extrude kind of on this rail here, which is what I want, uh, particularly X or Z, whichever direction this is. So I'm gonna extrude this out pretty far because I wanna have a lot of mass to work with before I start chiseling this out. Cool. Now these two objects are together. When I'm done, I'll probably merge this so that I can move them together because I'm always gonna want these to be together. But more or less, this is, this is the way I want it to be. Okay, so already I'm kind of annoyed that this is so big. I wouldn't mind scaling these both down so I can kind of work with them on a much, uh, Go back the window here too, uh, and select both of these, scale them down so I can work with them on it. I'm much easier to work with scale. So what I did was I just scaled these both down, pulled this over to me. And now this is the fun part. This is where I actually use CSG or constructive solid geometry to chisel out pieces from this earth. One thing I will say about CSG is as it stands in Birdo Studio right now, if you use CSG at all, that's the end all be all for this particular mesh that you're working with because it will create T-junctions, which will kind of throw off future 3D modeling tasks that you want to do on that object, like recomputing the normals, or I don't know, um, reducing poly count and so forth. That fix that will eventually be fixed and and, uh, and and made more robust in a later version. And it doesn't affect too many things, but it's just something to be aware of if you're a 3D artist and you know that T junctions aren't great. Uh, it'll create those, but you know, I digress. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a cube here and create it and kind of use my cube as my chisel tool. You can take any object that's low poly that defines a basic shape and use that as your tool to chisel pieces out. I'll explain. So <laughs> I'll do the best I can to make this not terrible because I'm not really the best artist in the world. But basically by pushing, putting this here and then doing chisel, it'll chisel out a piece of the model. I don't know where this came from, but it looks like something that's not going to affect what I'm doing, so I'm going to keep proceeding. Chisel again. And you can see I'm basically carving out irregularities in, the, in what will be the bottom. You notice I lost the brown material. That's fine. I can reassign that later. That's kind of one of the things that um, CSG does to the mesh currently. Uh, it does not break the texture coordinates, though, so we'll keep those uh, chisel. Now, you'll notice as I'm doing this, if I pop back into edit mode just to kind of check and see what's going on, it's creating a lot of faces here, and it's creating a lot of T-junctions if I pop back into vertex mode as well. So that's that stuff I was telling you about. But if you have anti-aliasing on like I do in VR and you kind of look at it, it's really hard to see those cracks. And if you're just trying to make kind of like an artistic looking thing, it's not a problem.
So that little thing I added, that little corner in the beginning, uh, that actually turned out to be kind of a real pain in the ass to remove later. So I probably should have avoided that in the very beginning. It's just kind of an artifact that CSG can create sometimes. You'll see later on I take care of it by just tucking it inside, which isn't ideal. But in the future, you know, I probably should. And whenever you're doing CSG modeling, if you see it create a corner that's not inside the actual shape when you first get started, you're going to want to really avoid having that be created because it becomes a real pain to delete it later due to the t-junctions and normal recomputation stuff I was talking about. So again, just when you're doing CSG, really try to avoid those little island shapes that might be not a part of your original object because they can come back to bite in the ass later. Figure that out. Okay. Almost through with all this here. I'd like to round off this little edge. I could. So I pretty much have this exactly the way I wanted as far as I want the ground to be. Uh, one thing that's really annoying me right now that I definitely need to uh, address is that there seems to be some parts that CSG is creating up here that I can't seem to be able to get rid of. So what I ended up doing during the recording was just taking all that extra junk, scaling it down, and actually tucking it inside the... Uh the model or the ground itself. Uh, it's not an ideal solution. In the future, I'm going to add a, a function to Virto to uh, lock all normals so that essentially deleting will not cause it to recompute and mess with the CSG. Um, so I'll be doing that and adding some other future CSG improvements uh, in an upcoming update to make this stuff a little smoother. Uh, CSG still is an experimental feature, but it really is useful, so I wanted to demonstrate it in this video nonetheless. All right, so now that I have my ground the way I want, I'm going to reassign that brown color to it. And it more or less looks similar to what I want, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to group it together with the green grass and essentially make that my, my ground for everything. So I should be able to select these two pieces. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, I have additive selection on here, so select these two pieces, take this and rotate it. Uh, actually, let me merge it together first. So I go to Properties, More, and Merge. There might be a merge on my main menu as well. I'm just used to kind of grabbing it here. Yeah, there is. Uh, and now they're together and they have their respective material groups. And the nice thing about this is I should be able to rotate it by 90 degrees um, and kind of make it my ground here. So rotate, precision adjustment, uh, that's red. So I want to go 90 degrees about X. Oh, that's absolute. So I want to go relative DX 90 ply. And that should have been negative 90. So let me just do that three more times, and that's the good, good is the same as doing it once the other way. So now I have my ground the way I want it. And I'm going to put it right here at about the grid level, and I'm just going to scale it out big enough so it feels, oops. Uh, one way to actually make this scale from a different center would actually be to take the object pivot. If I turn it on, show pivots, and snap the pivot, uh, pivot to one of the front faces so that it will scale out from not its center, but the top. Uh, so I'm going to turn on snap the faces, take the pivot, grab it, move it up top. It really just could be anywhere on the top. And now that will actually use that as the, uh, I'm turning this back off, the scaling centroid. So once I do this, now it should scale relative to that pivot, which it pretty much does. This isn't exactly level with the, uh, with the, with the plane uh, or the grid. I'll take care of that in a moment. Let me turn off uh, the pivot here. Yeah. And what I'd like to do is actually snap this. Well, let me rotate this better. So building the house shouldn't be too bad. Basically, all I need is two cubes to start with. 
and they're more or less about the color I'd want them to be. I'd like to do this to scale, but I think I'm going to stick with a small scale first, just so it's easier for me to get around, which should be fine. So there's one cube that's kind of like this, and then there's another smaller one, which sits alongside of it. Again, I can move this in one direction by simply pressing menu while I'm moving it, and it will lock that movement. I wouldn't mind this one scaling from the bottom as well. It's going to be a little tricky to do this because I can't actually see the bottom while I'm doing this. But if I turn pivots back on and then ask this thing to snap to face, I can take this pivot and grab it and move it down to its bottom. And by doing that again, what I've done here is I made it so that this thing will now scale relative to that bottom down there, which kind of makes it easier for me to scale it. And also, if I had this thing snapping to the grid, which I actually probably will ask it to do now, that bottom pivot, when I move this thing, will snap to the grid, which is just a useful thing for me to be able to do. Now I'm going to actually turn that off, and I'm going to move it in only this direction and move it right inside that house, or just almost right next to it. You'll notice, too, even if you're way off in the air, it always takes the direction of the greatest movement when you press menu. So that's another thing to kind of keep in mind there. Okay. There we go. When I'm done, I'm probably going to move the ground up into the grid just so that uh, the grid doesn't become visible, but also anything that looks like it's floating off the bottom doesn't become an issue. So we have this. This seems to be about the right height. I wouldn't mind this being a little higher, actually. Again, it will scale relative to that, um, that bottom. So just a little taller. Maybe a bit like that. I don't want to be a perfectionist here and waste too much time. Okay, uh, next thing looks like there is an indent in the garage. I just want to look at this relative sizes here. Maybe I should work to scale because I'm starting to get a little bit. So the original scale was one. I just want to make sure this actually feels like a garage because everything seems a little too narrow to me. And one of the advantages of working in VR is that things really should have a better sense of scale than when you're looking at a picture. Um, everything here feels entirely too narrow. Um, so what I might do here, let me call two real world scale. So this is real world. Great, I'm like right up against my wall. Uh, okay. So this would be the house, this would be the garage. I'm gonna make both of these uh, scale out a bit. So what I'm gonna do here is show you guys a technique for cutting the hole that's gonna make the garage door uh, section. Um, I could use CSG and cut the cube out, um, but as I showed you before, CSG can create some problems with T-junctions, too many faces. Uh, it's a kind of dirty way to work, so I kind of want to show you guys another technique for doing that that uh, has kind of been tried and true for me um, involving subdivision. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one face here and I'm going to subdivide it enough times so that I know I have enough to work with as far as space. This is probably about what I want. And what that does, it allows me to kind of have a ring around the sides here that I want to use for the actual door. Uh, and the idea here is that if I can go into paint mode, select the interior here of what is essentially going to be the part that I'm going to push in or extrude inward to make the garage door section, and then scale it out only so much that it does not cause, you'll see the flickering up there, the clipping into the regions of these top two faces up here, which essentially causes the quads to break. Um, I want to be careful. If I do actually scale that to the point where, um, where it does, I can usually select those and split them to triangles and fix the problem, but still I like to be careful. Um, I'll actually show you guys that because I kind of want it to be about like this. 
So the idea here is I'm going to take that and then I'm going to deselect by just shooting anywhere and then pick these two faces here by pressing into the select tool, add select mode, select them both. See how you have two face split quads is what I'm looking for. And as they split off, it kind of fixed the degeneration issue. This doesn't always work, but in most cases it does. And I don't see any flickering or any problems, and I have my interior the way I want it. Some of these went beneath the ground. Uh, I can fix that pretty easily simply by uh, uh, selecting the verts under there and kind of bringing them back up. Uh, so let me fly underground here just a little bit. There they are. Yeah, that really kind of messed some things up here. Uh, I think it's only these vertices should be able to fix it. So I'm underground here. I'm just going to go to auto. I'm going to switch back to point selection. I'm going to go to the select and I'm going to go to paint. One thing that uh, is kind of interesting about Virto Studio and VR is that you can only select points by aiming at the green meshes or the green part of the surface that actually subtends them. If you had a point that was floating out in 3D space, you would have to use either the box or the window to kind of encompass it to select it. Uh, that's just something I want to bring up. But these, of course, I'm just aiming at the corner here, and I'm just going to kind of drag across and select this whole row like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move everything up back above ground just by locking it like this. I'm going to select these now. Select, add just the two, and then move these up as well. Let me fly back above ground here. I'll make sure this looks flat, it does. Okay, this should be enough for me to grab the interior here. Go back to face selection mode, select. If I did this right, I should be able to push in and everything should kind of look like that garage door. This is more time consuming than doing CSG, but you'll get a better result. Extrude. Oh, so one thing about the extrude tool that you'll notice is if you have too many faces for it to be done interactively, you'll be prompted with this uh, dialogue instead, which kind of does it more in a one-shot swoop instead of by you pushing and dragging. So in this particular case, uh, I think I'm going to select Z. So. Again, this doesn't have to be exact. I can move it later. And that's essentially what we have is we've, you can see we've pushed into the garage door now. And it's essentially, it's a little bit too far. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna move it uh, back just a little closer like this, post extrude. And what we have here is basically the door. Now you can see it's done a little smooth shading here. So all I really have to do to fix that is go to mesh, say set flat. Uh, again, you cannot do this uh, if you've done something like CSG on the mesh because it'll, it'll try to recompute the normals and get confused. But because we haven't used CSG, we can kind of do whatever we want, use all the editing tools available to us. And what this does here is that anything that's more than a 45 degree angle will appear flat. Now you can see it's really sharp edges, which is kind of the idea for low poly. So you can see the nice crease in the wall there. Without that set flat step, it looked pretty ugly because it would be trying to treat these as smooth shaded edges, which is kind of an annoyance. So uh, this is more or less looking the way I want it to. It's not 100%, um, but again, when I move the ground up, you won't even be able to tell. So um, that's good. That's good. I like that. All right. So we're going to repeat that um, interesting process to carve out both the door and the window frame on the actual house itself. I it a couple times. You really want to get the resolution that you want here. So, you know, you're going to go pretty high. That should be enough to carve out that window area. I'm going to do one more time simply because this doesn't hurt and then it should be enough to carve out the door. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the door first. I'm going to walk right over to it be like what I could fit in. Select. We're already in additive paint mode. So I feel like maybe I'm going to literally make this only as tall as me. I want it to be more or less symmetric though. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, this is gonna be the world's smallest door and that only I could fit in. It's kind of funny, but that'll do it. And then I'm going to extrude this again because there's too many polygons to do interactive extrusion. This pops up instead. 
Uh, one of the days I might edit Virto and up this limit. I think I have it too conservative, but uh, for now it's fine. I'm going to do Z, negative, extrude. And then I'm going to push back in uh, a little bit because it's a little too deep for a doorway. Or I could separate this out and have it so the doorway, you know, as if basically as if I deleted it and you can actually go into the house, uh, which I'm not going to model in there, but I'd like the door to be a separate model anyway. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing in this case, instead of actually pushing this back in, I'm going to face separate this out. And now it's a separate mesh. I don't like this clipping down here. I don't know. I think this is only clipping because it's, uh, it's clipping into the, um, the green. I mean, that's kind of what I hope is going on. Uh, in which case, if this is clipping like this, me moving up the ground should more or less fix that. And that's what I would expect. So I'm going to ignore this for now and take care of the door first. The door is basically going to be a brown color. Because this is low poly, I'm not going to use any textures. It's just kind of the art style I'm going for here. So basically something like that. And the idea is the door itself is actually going to have some thickness to it. So I'm going to go into edit mode for the door. I'm going to select everything. I could just replace this with a cube if I was really concerned about the poly count. Uh, select all, extrude, and Z. I think that's Z, like this, done. Let me just make sure that this is really a physical door. It is. Uh, it doesn't hurt to go into edit mode here and set flat. When it comes to setting things flat, which I'm going to do across the board when I'm done, uh, there is a flat shader I can use as well. The only thing I won't be able to set flat is the bottom ground because I use CSG on that, but I have a shader that I can run on that later that'll fix that as well. Uh, cool. We're almost ready, uh, done with the house. Let me recenter myself here. I'm really close to my back wall. Okay, so now let me take care of the windows. The windows are a little bit wider than the door and they're about half as tall. So if I go into my select, I'm, I'm just checking to see which mode I'm in here. I should be able to do something like this. Again, I'm just want, I like things to be symmetric, so I'm counting the number of uh, faces on each side, which is more or less good. I think that's gonna do it for me. And I'm gonna take this part, and I'm going to extrude this, huh inward as well. I'm going to recreate uh, the T, the uh, not really T, but the actual separations between the windows here in a second as well manually. Let's extrude, C, negative, go. Cool. I'm going to fly here for a second to get close to this. Okay, auto, edit, okay. So I got basically the shape that I want for this. I can't move this while I'm in edit, so I gotta bring this closer, go back. Uh, the idea here is that this should be able to be taken care of pretty easily by just me adding a plane uh, to, uh, to this. So uh, a couple ways I could do this. Uh, I could separate it out. Um, I guess there's no reason for me not to, so that's probably what I'll do. I'll just select this, just grab these pieces, be really careful to make sure I don't grab any of the faces along the side and top. If I do, I'd have to remove them. I do face, uh, separate, done, bam, here, cube. It's got its own material. It's blue, which is cool. And then I'm going to add, uh, um, if you ever find you can't deselect something, it's usually because you have add left on and select. And I think even an auto, no, okay, an auto it doesn't. But yeah, just be careful of that. Switch it back to replace in that case or switch away from the select tool. I'm going to cre uh, recreate um, with cubes the uh, particular um, dividers for this window. Uh, I wouldn't mind it using the same material as this, but I don't know if I have um, access to duplicating materials yet. Um, so uh, I think the easiest thing for me to do in this particular case would be, well, if I really, really cared that much about the material, which, you know, maybe I do, I could literally just duplicate this and then pop it into edit mode. It's silly, but it works. Select everything, delete, and then while still in edit mode, adding a cube, taking that cube, select connect it on it, and bringing it over here. 
Uh, the reason it seems like a ridiculous thing to do, but the cool thing is now I have the same material here, and they're even linked. So like if I wanted to change this material, you know, I could, and it'll affect both. Anyway, let's go back into edit mode here, make this a much smaller cube. Uh, edit mode. I gotta watch my boundaries. I keep getting way too close to my wall. Oh, I shouldn't have teleported. I have a really good spot. Okay. I have to be careful because fly actually makes me sick if I use it too much. I'm one of those people where I don't have VR legs. Uh, so if I select all here, swiping down to it, and then scaling this down, and then I could hold, and you don't see, but I can reel in like a fishing line on the touchpad and bring it to me. And it's another thing that's kind of worth watching this video to see. I'm going to fly ever so slightly down and turn this thing into a really flat cube. I think you guys are uh, getting the idea where I'm going with this here. The idea, uh, I basically take this, it's fine, duplicate, put him. If I really wanted it to be exact, I suppose I could go to the precision adjustment tool like go into move, precision adjustment, and translate it by meters at a time. I don't know if it's meters in edit mode, but I know in object mode it is actually real world meters. Uh, in the sake of this, in, of time and, and how much time this has been taking, I don't want to take much more time on this. I'm going to grab this one piece, face, select connected to grab the whole thing, duplicate it again, rotate it. Now again, this is inexact, so what I'm going to do here is actually go to precision. That's blue is Z and ask it for a 90 degree rotation about Z and apply it. And that did work. Hide the little keyboard, click out of this view. And now uh, I have a 90 degree rotated plank. I don't want it to look ugly, you know, I want it to at least look respectable. I feel like this whole window is a little wider um, than it normally would be in this picture. That looks a lot better. Okay, I can work with that. Okay, so that's the basic window shape of the house. We have everything flat shaded and more or less like we want. Now it's time to mess with the roof, which is something that I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna fly up over here. Uh, the roof of the actual garage should be really easy to do. It's basically just a red cube. So again, cube scale, whoops. I have my scale lock still, so I gotta remember to reset those out because those stay even if you leave the tool. Uh, so we basically have something along the lines of this. I've been using the fly tool more. It's making me a little nervous because I don't want to get myself uh, nauseous, but uh, I seem to be okay. We'll see. So I'm gonna scale this down to be about that high. And then I'm gonna scale it out like this. Okay, and I don't want this to be too tall. I just want it to be flat. Again, if you're having trouble aiming at that, you could just use the locks. It really just depends on what the current situation is. So this doesn't have to be perfect, but the idea here, maybe we can get above this. You wanted to kind of do the best you can to match this up. Let me make it red now. There we go, cherry red. This was a way I can get up without having to fly. Okay, scale, a little bit more like this. There we go. That's pretty good. Cool. I'm just gonna pop out and pop back in to save here real quick. Okay, so we got the top half of the roof. Um, what I'd like to do is actually take this and essentially take the house and modify it so that it has a uh, kind of like an apex for the actual, the roof of the house, right? Um, there's two ways I can do that. One, I could edit the house. I think an easier way to do this would actually be to maybe, well, if I wanted it to be continuous, I guess I would need to actually uh, extend the house out. So let me try it in edit mode first. 
Um, ideally, what I would do in this case is uh, literally taking this one vertex right here and duplicating the guy and then moving him up into the sky to where I think the roof should basically apex should be and then literally creating a triangular face out of these three vertices and then subdividing this guy enough so that I can weld all these together. Um, if I didn't care about T-junctions, I could literally just leave uh, the T-junction there. In other words, these guys all kind of forming cracks. Um, we'll see how that looks. Um, but personally, I think it might be a fun exercise to try to uh, auto-weld these. Eventually, I'd like to add a tool for Berto that actually welds every single close mesh. So you don't have to do it one by one. Um, but I digress. Uh, so let's give this a try. So I've selected him. Again, because he's in the air, I can't aim at him. I have to do the window to select him. And then I'm going to switch this over to additive mode and grab this guy and this guy. Check that I have three selected and then say face create new. I'd always make sure that the consistency is there so this thing appears to be facing to me so that I don't have to do a face flip, in which case uh, sometimes the normals just aren't really facing in the right direction. Uh, I could take this thing, and I don't know if it would subdivide perfectly, um, but I would want to have enough subdivisions here so that I can at least work with it. I basically just subdivide the face until I have enough vertices to link up. So maybe one more time. Now, as you can see, it should be very easy for me to literally just automatically weld these together so that we can keep the consistency. In other words, if I fly over to these guys one by one, I should see that there's actually two faces inside these selections. So I swipe over to select, I hit box, I drag, and it tells me, oh, in this case, there was already just one. In this case, it should say two. See, two. So then I say vertex, weld, and then those two are welded. I do it again. Vertex weld. Okay. You see, there's a seam. What the hell? That better? Uh, hold on. Oh, that scared me. That actually appeared like it was denting into the surface, but that's just what happens with this particular lighting setup. So first thing, I'm just going to try setting it flat again and see if that works. That seems to have actually fixed the problem, so I'm going to leave it just like that. Uh, I don't have a normal visualization uh, mode in VR, but if I could check in uh, desktop mode or... Uh, I think it's there in desktop mode. I could actually see which way the normals are pointing and flip them accordingly, but I think this is fine. And the best part about this is the surface is watertight again, so it can actually push in and out. I don't have cracks or T-junctions or whatever. It took an extra couple seconds. I think it's worth it. So let's take care of the other side of this because we really only have this particular side of everything. Um, I think the easiest way to maybe deal with this right now um, would be for me to vertex mode. Duplicate in place, extrude, Z, negative, there, okay. That should still, well, let me, let me finish moving this. Very, very close, fly, flat. Okay. So what I'm doing here is just jumping into the house and deleting the ceiling between the actual roof and the uh, interior of the house. Uh, this kind of eliminates any potential manifold issues that might arise from the uh, junctions between uh, the uh, corners of the house and the ceiling and the roof. Uh, this is kind of an optional step, but uh, you know, it's just something I like to do to make sure the house itself is one solid object from the outside. but I want to move on to the next step, uh, which is basically uh, putting the, the red roof on this thing. Um, the red roof shouldn't be too bad. It should basically be these two faces extruded out um, uh, independently of one another. Uh, and basically what I would do in this case is duplicate these and separate them. So the idea is I go back into the house edit mode. 
Oh, there's a lot there. Um, take this, take these spaces right here. Let me get closer. I knew I was going to grab something I didn't want to. Remove those. Okay. So one issue you really want to be careful about is you want to be in vertex mode before you duplicate in place since the selection needs to be uh, properly loaded for the points. Um, so then you duplicate this in place and then you do a separate. And you should have everything you need on both sides. That's something you want to check before you move on ahead so you don't have to redo it. All right, so take this, make sure you grab the actual roof and not the house. Like so, move it up a little bit higher, pop into edit mode, select everything, extrude in Y, just a little bit. If that dialog doesn't pop up, that means the vertex counts low enough that you need to do it manually. So I just held the option or the menu button and moved it up into the vertically. And then I set flat. I move it all the way down to zero to ensure I get some flat shading. And then I pick this piece. And because it's separated, I should be able to edit its material to be that similar shade of red to what I want. And then I move it, or I scale it just a little bit out in Z. And I move it and plop it right back on top of the house. If I wanted to, which I guess I do, I can take these last four vertices here and extend them along the edge to make the roof come out past the end. So by simply selecting what's it, additive mode in paint mode, four vertices along the very end, and then moving them like this. This is not a very exact science, but you get the idea. Now it's past the edge of the house. I'm going to do that on the other side. Add paint. This is one of the few cases where I'm moving something, but I'm not moving it exactly in uh, X, Y, or, or, uh, X, Y, or Z. Okay. So that looks like that's our roof. We're getting really close here. Uh, what I'd like to do now is add the, uh, the driveway, which more or less is gonna start, you guessed it, with another cube. Let me just get this other one out of my face. Okay, could have just used that one, I guess. The idea with this is it's going to be very, narrow, or I should say uh, shallow, in the y-axis. Maybe about like that. Now in this case, I'm going to lock y so that it doesn't blow up again when I scale it. So this is a way of me scaling only in x and z. So maybe about like this. And then I'm going to turn off x as well. Go like this. That's a little too much. It's only about, well, it's a little wider than the driveway. Just checking out my picture. Again, I don't have to be exact here, but maybe about like this. There's really only two more things I'd like to add. Uh, I'm going to leave the car for later as well, uh, simply because this is kind of running long. Um, same thing goes with the actual uh, door as well. Um, this particular door right here should actually have a separate material. So I can pick this, go to properties, I'm just going to call this door. Uh, go 
garage door. Make it whitish. Basically the gray that was already there. Go here, go here. Grab all the faces that belong to the garage door. And then assign them to that material group I just created called the garage door. And what that does is allows it to have a different uh, prop, uh, material group. I was just noticing the windows were a little taller in the actual uh, uh, reference that I have. So I just figured I might take care of that real quick. That's a little nicer. I could bring it a little top but uh, higher, but it would end up crashing into the vertices I have up there. So, uh, okay. Uh, I'd like to do some clouds, but since the treetops and the clouds are really similar, uh, I am going to use CSG for those, otherwise it'd be a nightmare. Uh, I think what I'm going to do in this case is um, just work on those separately and then duplicate them out and probably call it a day on this project, at least for now. Um, but hopefully it gives you an idea of kind of how to do this kind of modeling in VR in Virto uh, for low poly. Um, so let's start out with... I'd like to do top first. Tree, uh, the tree trunk itself will kind of be, well, I'll do the trunk, screw it. So here's the trunk, right? That's a perfect, nice looking trunk. Um, actually, let me scale this down so it's easier to work with. In this particular case, I can move this anyway. Well, once I edit it, it won't be so easy, but trees are not exactly directly aligned to the earth anyway, so I'm okay, I'm okay doing that. Uh, let me bring my quote unquote, actually, I'm gonna regenerate my chisel tool because that other one was giving me trouble. Um, I don't want trouble scale. Down. Okay, come over here so I don't crash into the wall. So in this particular case, it should be pretty easy for me to do. I should just have to chunk out pieces of it so it looks irregular, right? Is there a way I can make this stay a color so I know it's like different? My chisel tool. I don't know if it'll keep its color, but I'll try. Tree itself I know won't, but that's a different thing, chisel. Good, just make sure this is working. Okay, so chisel out here. The most important thing, and this ran into trouble before, is I don't want this thing adding any other weird things from this cube that it can't, it can't get away from, you know? Uh, I had some issues before where I had some problems when I was creating the, the ground underneath, and I don't want that to happen again. Okay, it's starting to look like a tree trunk. I might do one or a couple more just to make it look, you know, irregular and, and kind of more natural chisel. Okay, that's pretty good for now, I think. I mean, it's never gonna be perfect. Um, so let's go for a wood color, like so. Okay, so that's the tree scale, a little higher. So here we go, cube. This one I'm gonna keep uniform in size for obvious reasons or in scale. Well, I just tried to uh, get these off, okay. Okay, let's take this guy, plop him up top. I don't want him, so the way CSG works is if, if bounding boxes overlap, that's where they actually will, will, it'll be performed. I don't want this thing to even have a chance of getting chiseled, so I'm actually gonna move out of the way before I start messing with this. Come on, okay. 
So this is going to take a while. I thought start about I thought about starting with a sphere, but the problem with a sphere in CSG is it really doesn't work too well, and it looks too round, and there's just some issues with it. I might if this looks too ugly, I might try a low poly sphere, but for now I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go for it. So chisel. Again, I'm making sure there are no other pieces that are coming off from a, a CSG glitch here. Chisel. What the hell? Grab it. Cannot subtract. You must overlap to. I think it might have clipped into uh, the ground when I did that. Yeah, if I put it into the ground, it, it, it'll have issues. So, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, maybe I'll just get myself higher off the ground here so that can't happen. Okay, that's better. See, that little stuff bothers me. That little piece can, can be an issue later. So I really want to make sure I don't run into issues later where I end up having chunks I can't remove. Because like I said, if you go into edit mode here and start deleting vertices, it'll recompute the normals, and that, that, that runs you into trouble. So, okay. This takes a long time to make this look nice. I should, I should stop removing bigger chunks and kind of try to give this thing some character here by going smaller each time. And I'm running into my wall again. That's great. Let me bring this crap over here. Starting to look like a tree. Not really, but yeah. I think I have to have this selected before I select chisel, I think. So I just don't want it to look like a diamond. I want it to look like a almost like a spheroid. Oops, that's what I thought was going to happen. you got to have this selected to chisel that. Otherwise, you'll use the other one to chisel the other one, and that's not what I want to do. Let me see here. It's coming together. I don't like this long... I don't want any big, long, flat parts if I can help it. kind of hard to get into that though. Uh, and I don't want to remove too much mass either, you know. Chisel. Chisel. I need to enable grab with the left hand. Oh, I don't like this. Well, actually it's kind of cool looking. You know what? This might actually work. This might actually work. I kind of like this. I could keep messing with this all day. Let me maybe chunk on into here. Let me put like a freaking dent in this. That's kind of cool. Let me try that. Chisel. You see the issues you have with the ray casting that you got to be careful with? Uh, that's one of another reason you can have issues with CSG and VR if you're not careful. That's awesome. I like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that a couple more times. Let's put a freaking dent in it. Chisel. See, that is what can't happen. This is the is an issue that needs to like. If that happens, you, you got to be really careful not to let that ever happen, because then you can't get it gone. Yeah, this is probably the most I can do with this one. Actually, you do it too many times, it starts to have problems. You know? That's the issue with CSG. Is you know, you, it's just it creates so many vertices all over the place. So you just got to be careful with it. it. It'll improve with time. Um, but I'm, I'm happy with it the way it is, so for now. Uh, let me get back. What did I just do? Delete. Okay. I do not want to accidentally delete something else, so okay. So let me grab this, rotate this onto the treetop. That's kind of cool. I'm not too worried about this piece over here. I think it actually looks kind of neat. Uh, if I need, if I really wanted to, I could do the other trick before where I grab this and select with the box. And you could tuck this in and just put it in here so it's out of your way. Uh, that's one way to avoid the normals recalculating because it only messes with the ones you move. Okay, so I'm going to pull this up and f give it like a dark, that's kind of like a cool color. And kind of call that a tree. And then I'm going to take both of these, group them together, select 
these two objects and only these two objects. Let me just make sure of that. And then I'm going to merge them. And that just makes it easy for me to transform them together in a group. So basically the idea is now that they exist in two separate material groups, but they are one editable mesh. And there we go. Uh, these are actually the right size relative to this house, at least as far as this picture is concerned. I may make it a little bit bigger. Um, wait, 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 wait. I feel like uh, I had some restrictions on scale. No, I didn't. Okay. So maybe like this. Go over to this. This is the fun part. I just get to take these, duplicate them around, and play with their sizes. So basically duplicate, duplicate. I do have something called duplicate instance and in other versions of Virto. Um, but in this particular version, uh, I didn't bother with that feature yet, simply because the performance in VR is so good, it doesn't seem like it's really necessary. Duplicate, rotate, like so. Scale. So you get the idea. I'm literally just gonna put these everywhere. And now that I got this group of all of them, I can literally just say, add to a selection, the trees, duplicate the whole shebang. I don't want a ton of them. The whole idea of this is kind of minimalism, so this is kind of a silly thing. I might only put like three of them over here and actually get rid of this guy. And then, like I said, I was going to do, I'm going to take the whole ground and move it up so the grid is kind of no longer visible. And so that uh, everything I said that was going to be an issue uh, does not become one. You know what, this is this is easier to just do like this. Okay. All right. There's other stuff to be done and I might revisit it in a later tutorial, like adding a car or a dog, which would probably be hard for me. Other stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, um, I feel pretty good about this. I mean, it's not bad for like an hour or two of work. Um, and I can move, play with the lighting here. Certain parts of the lighting feel like too bright to me and stuff like that. But you get the idea. Um, this is the scene. Um, do I have a tree sticking out of the house? Only a little bit. This is actually a fun uh, trick. I can take this, go to pivot, put the pivot down here, and then rotate the tree away from the house like this. That's kind of a fun thing to do. All right, again, when I'm aiming at some of the CSG things, the controller doesn't like it too much because of that. And again, that's a tricky issue with CSG. Um, but when you're not aiming at those uh, or in their bounding boxes, you won't have any issues. So that's the tutorial. That's basically how you would do this kind of modeling in Virto. Um, it's kind of, uh, it takes a little bit to get the hang of it, but um, you know, consider this kind of basics of, of uh, traditional 3D modeling. Uh, the CSG is not very traditional. And again, I, I, I try to avoid it if I can help it, but it does produce really pretty results. Um, but this is kind of the idea of, of how to do all this. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this tutorial. So that's the end.